Einige pflegen auch in Tertien einen doppelten Triller mit einer Hand zu üben. Diese können sich nach Belieben unter den bei Figur 42 in der ersten und zweiten Tabelle befindlichen Exempeln unterschiedene Arten von solchen doppelten Tertien Trillern auslesen. Auch diese Übung, man bringe es nun so weit als man wolle, ist wegen der Finger nützlich. Außerdem aber lasse man sie bei der Ausführung lieber weg, wenn sie nicht recht gleich und scharf sind, ohne welche zwei Punkte kein Triller gut sein kann. So Bach states again his position on trills. He reaffirms it and he says, when the trills are not really even and sharp, and you know, sharp can mean sharp or be translated as sharp. And in terms of, in German sharp, with regards to food, if you say something is sehr scharf, you'll be talking about hot, how hot it is, or you know, spice, how hot spicy food is. So the scharf can be used in that context. And then other words that can be used to translate scharf could be um, precise, exact, clear, or strong. So that's, so he says, without these two elements, no trill can be good. And so he's talking about the, a double trill in thirds that, you know, some people are, are want to practice these. And he refers to those examples on, in, in figure 42, in the first and second tables, that you can, out of that you can read various versions of of trills and he's introducing those examples for the fingering so with with those examples you get the fingering too and you might notice or you might wonder that Bach seems a little distant or or vague here in this paragraph you know he's he's or a bit non-committal and he's he's not really you know if you compare it to paragraph 8 when he says about and paragraph 9 where he says about how to practice trills and he guarantees in the footnote he guarantees you success where forcing it with the metronome with all those things where you'll never you'll never get there where looking outside the cage and actually getting out of the cage, where that'll bring you. So he's, he's, he's in, in comparison to that, he's, he's not so committed here. He's, he's kind of vague and he's saying, um, so yeah, it's up to you to bring it as far as you want to. And it's useful for the fingers. But he says, leave it, leave it out of the performance. You rather leave it out of the performance if it's not, if it's not as that, if it doesn't have the same quality that without which no trill can be good. So he's. He's not so committed and he's not, he's leaving it up to you. He's leaving a lot of, a lot of empty space there for you to, he's not encouraging you. He's not guaranteeing, he's not doing anything really. He's leaving it up to you to decide. And why is that? Why is he doing that? And 
And could it be, I said in that last video, how Bach wrote um, paragraph eight. He'll as well have written paragraph 11 in the same way. So why is he so non-committal as far as it go comes to double trills in thirds? Hmm. And I'll say like, in terms of with relation to figure 42, when I went through the videos um, on that chapter on fingering, I provide AC fingering for all those examples. And that when you use AC fingering, you will be able to play double trills and thirds with AC fingering and with the finger position that I provide. Wenn der oberste Ton eines Trillers auf einen halben Ton fällt und der unterste auf der untersten Reihe Tasten ist, so ist es nicht unrecht, mit dem überschlagenen linken Daumen und dem zweiten Finger den Triller zu machen. Figur 26 Einige Personen pflegen auch zu ihrer Bequemlichkeit, zumal, wenn das Griffbrett hart ist, mit der rechten Hand die Triller mit dem dritten und fünften oder zweiten und vierten zu machen. So, Bach recommends, he shows an unusual fingering, a fingering that doesn't really fit. It's like an exception. It doesn't fit into the principles he was generally presented in his chapter on fingering. And he says, this is, this is not wrong to play the trill with these fingers, with the, with the left hand, with the, the thumb on the white key and the second finger on the black key on the E flat crossed over. And you will as well see how he says, he, he calls it the lower level of keys. And you can as well see if you've been looking at my videos on, on the how to play the piano set list, those episode videos, you can see how much the fact that the white and black keys are on different levels plays in to all those things I've presented, all those answers I have come up with that I am sharing with you. The answers you won't find anywhere. And that Bach, and you won't hear the dimension that the keys are on a different level, really in any significant way anywhere on YouTube or in, when you're reading. I, I think when I was in college, I, I read every single book on technique I could get my hands on. I perhaps know them all. And I, I was fooled by a lot of them. There was one Abby Whiteside that I thought, yeah, this is it, this is, this is the real deal. And Abby Whiteside is very much a copy of that Dorothy Deaf man, the Dorothy Taub man. Same crap. And I, you know, I, got, I got sucked into it like so many people do. So I know, I know what, um, What's there? I've, uh, if there's a, if there was, a, if a, any book on technique that was published up to that point, I have read. So it could be that I have read more books on techniques than you have. And if you are defending any certain school, that I will know exactly what has been said in those schools. So Bach says that this is not wrong. And so he, it's like an exception to the principles of the fingering. And I will say that this way of playing them is exactly AC fingering. And that every time Bach presents an exception, it's always AC fingering. 
and it's box grader instinct that he recognizes that he doesn't try to eliminate anything that might contradict or might go against what he's saying about fingering because he doesn't worship false gods even though he might have not found the one true god he is his instinct his quality prevents him from worshiping false gods he knows hold on he doesn't dismiss something just because it doesn't fit into his belief system he has the instinct he has the quality to recognize the quality of something and then say even though it's not exactly fitting in and even though i can't explain it it's still good and there was a a footnote that belongs i'll just read it now it's a short one it belongs to paragraph 78 on the chapter of fingering and at the time i had overlooked it i'd just i'd overlooked it so i didn't have it included so i'll just include it here and so he says folgen de fingersetzung ist auch für gewisse hände bequem and in, then he gives these two examples and these two as well are ac fingering exactly and they as well involve that second finger crossing over the thumb in the same way that Bach is describing here. And why are all those exceptions that Bach recognizes as being good? That his instinct, that it, it, his instinct is more on call here because it goes against the, the general belief. Why are they always AC fingering? Because AC fingering solves fingering. And that's why there's no inconsistency between those exceptions no longer are exceptions. They're part of it because AC fingering solves the entire question of fingering. So, why if you're thinking of the, the, the paragraphs in order, it might think that this is a bit on its own. You know, before he was talking about how to play trills and, and you know, playing double trills and thirds and, and, and all with regards to, you know, using the finger, you know, how useful the, the practicing of them and the usefulness for the fingers and what fingers you're gonna use and all of this sort of thing. And then all of a sudden, he says, oh, and by the way, if you cross your second finger over the thumb when the second finger is on a black key and the thumb is on a white key, that's not wrong. You can do that. It seems a bit kind of just out of the blue. And why does he do that? What's Bach thinking? What's going through his mind? What went through his mind between paragraph 11 and chapter, or paragraph 12? That he does that. And if you were to try trills in double thirds for yourself, and Bach does not spoon feed, and he is talking. On the one hand, he'll be trying to talk to Lilliput in the hope that they might wake up. He is as well talking to quality people who are there not to just look for things that, that affirm, that feed their arrogance, that, that uh, affirm what they already know. He is talking to people who want to learn who are open and who consider and think. And so when you try the trills and double thirds, the double trills and thirds yourself, and you will be able to play them with AC fingering and the finger position I tried, 
you will notice something when you try trills and in, in uh, double trills and thirds. You will notice something. And when uh, as well, when he talks about you'd ra should rather leave it away from the performance. If you think of somebody like Bach or Mozart or Beethoven, they have not composed piano music that can't be performed, that can't be played. Especially not Beethoven. Not Mozart either. I mean, what am I saying? But uh, Beethoven would present more music where people might wonder, can that even be performed? You know, is it even performable if you think of the Hammerklavier Sonata, for example? Beethoven didn't write anything that couldn't be performed. And 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 if you if you've tried those trills for yourself, the double trills and thirds, and and you think of of double trills and thirds that make it to the performance. So Beethoven is not going to present trill, double trills and thirds in his piece that don't make it to the performance level, that don't have those two qualities without which no trill can be good, that it's not really even and, and sharp, precise, strong, exact, clear, whatever you want to call it, however you want to understand sharp, he is not going to present those trills, those double trills and thirds that don't possess those qualities. And what you'll find when you try it for yourself, and if you look at double trills and thirds, like let's say in the fourth piano concerto, you will see that the ones that work like actual trills should work. They involve those that cross the little finger over the thumb, the crossing of the fingers, whether they're all on white keys, or it's like a, you could a, tr a trill, let's say on with the lower tones are G and F sharp. The thumb will be on the G and the second finger will be on the F sharp. And they are the double trills and thirds that make it to the performance. So, if you're in Lilliput, skimming through this book, just going, looking for what you already know, these are all just items on your shopping list you can use and, and sh pass on to your students with, without actually providing them any benefit at all. But if you've been trying it, and you see that trills that don't involve the crossing over the finger, the double trills and thirds that don't involve crossing over the finger, that a lot of them are not that great. And they are not, that you'll be able to play them evenly maybe, but you won't get them with the speed of a trill. And that the ones that do work are the ones where the fingers crossed over. And Bach doesn't want to go into that in paragraph 11. He just doesn't want to go into it. But what if you're not, you know, and maybe he just doesn't want to go, you know, go there because he's thinking of Lilliput. And he's thinking it's Lilliput he's talking to. And let's say you're not in Lilliput, you're not in the cage, and you do find that, and you think, hold on, every single trill involves that works well, that I could have in a performance that I could include in the performance because they are wrecked glyph unsharp and they do possess those qualities that make a good trill. They all involve that. I wonder. And so you're one of them. What happens when you get to paragraph 12? You find Bach doesn't let you down. If you are not in Lilliput, if you are, are looking for the truth, if you are uh, considering what he says, trying it, you know, paying attention, Bach does not leave you high and dry. So what do you get in paragraph 12? You get the answer to that.
he tells you, but not by telling you, you can do that with the trills, but you can understand from that. He tells you, this trill on the left hand is perfectly okay. There's nothing wrong with it. And so you can draw from that, okay, that the trills in double, the double trills in thirds that involve the same crossing over the thumb and second finger or whatever fingers are crossed over. Mainly it's the thumb and second finger, I'd say. That they are not wrong, he answers you. But not only does he answer you, he, 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 you know, he answers you in a way that provides new information too. And that's so why he was so non-committal in paragraph 11. He gives the answer, but you can see he's not spoon feeding. The answer is there for somebody paying attention, for somebody who can connect the pieces of the jigsaw together and can form a bigger picture. So it makes perfect sense that he would go on to tell you about that fingering in the left hand because it's completely connected to the previous paragraph. And you know what that means when I spot that? It means I know what's going through Bach's mind. I am actually getting a glimpse into his thought processes, into what, and he discovered that he didn't want to go into it. But for those who spot it too, he has the answer for them because he doesn't want to leave somebody like me high and dry wondering he he has never let me down so here's the trill of figure 26 and here's some double trills and thirds which you will be able to, if you use AC fingering and the finger position I provide, you'll be able to play them too, just like I'm playing them. And finally, for all the Lilliput professors who told you that finger strength wasn't an issue back then, as a, as a reason to ignore what it is Bach is saying, that back then the action was much lighter. You know, Bach says that some people, there are people, a number of people, so more than one, who'll play a trill with the second and fourth finger or the third and fifth finger when the keyboard is hard, i.e. when the action is heavy. So their strategy to overcome a heavy action is playing a trill with either the second or fourth finger and the third and fifth finger. And in Horowitz's um, Moscow recital, you'll see him play trills with the second and fourth finger. And you'll see people play trills with the second and fourth finger. And why do they do that? What is the main reason for doing that? 
The only, th I, incidentally, I'll only play a, a second and fourth finger trill when they're on a black, when those notes are on the black key. Otherwise I'll use the third and fifth finger. But why do they do that? What's that strategy there to combat? It's there to combat the heavier action of a grand piano because it, it feels more possible. It feels like you're less affected by the heavier action, that, that you're using less strength when you play it with the second and fourth finger. So if you think it's modern, that idea, that it came with the grand piano. Obviously it must have, because finger strength wasn't an issue. They would, you only need to come up with a strategy to combat problems that actually exist. You, you, you don't, you can't anticipate problems that don't exist. You've no clue. So people will feel that this technique of playing a trill with the second and fourth finger belongs to the modern grand piano, belongs to the virtuosos that we know, and that you'll be doing it yourself to combat the heavier action of a modern grand piano. And it is a strategy that should have come if there was any truth whatsoever to what the Lilliput professor tells you. They should have never come up with that strategy back then because they won't have ever had the need for it. So there's the second piece of information. Again, Bach does not know about modern grand pianos. He doesn't know, he, he, he might say, he, he can't think, okay, so there's gonna be the Lilliput professors in the future and they're gonna tell their students to ignore what I say because of the modern grand piano. And so what I'll do is I'll tell them about the strategy that they're gonna use on the modern grand pianos because of the heavier action, like playing trills with the second and fourth finger. I'm gonna say it there and that, so that'll make them look stupid. But the thing is, he didn't know that. What makes the idiot, the, the Lilliput professors look stupid is that the actions back then were heavy and that they had to, the performers had, to, the, the finger strength was an issue back then. And, and when, finger, when they felt finger strength wasn't enough, they had to come up with strategies to overcome the heavier action. And one of the strategies is the exact same one that they're still using today on modern grand pianos, that people will think is a modern innovation of using the second and fourth finger to trill with. That is what's sh showing them up, destroying their argument. So don't ignore what Bach says. Don't think it's not relevant. Don't think it's because the piano, the actions on the keyboard instruments weren't so heavy and that finger strength wasn't an issue. Finger strength was as much an issue then as it is now. And Bach is fully aware about finger strength. And, and, and it is with that full awareness of finger strength that he recommends his way of practicing. And I say with the, with everything I share, you will find yourself practicing that way. And as well, I said that the, getting back to that crossed over trill, and I said that the, regarding that last paragraph in, or the last sentence in paragraph eight, that Bach was rather trying those, examining himself playing trills rather on white keys. And that will, this supports my assertion because if you see the way the fingers are when you play that trill with the crossed over finger, that you are not, it's not possible to have a completely it's not possible to do it the way Bach is saying to do it. And that supports my assertion that Bach was rather examining himself playing trills on white keys. 
and you as well now know, now that you know what secret it is Bach was sharing, you will know that that doesn't matter because you are not looking out for that you do it exactly like that it becomes obvious that you're doing it the way Bach says. But what you are doing it for is the clear and crisp Nachschlag. So there's gonna be nothing clownish about how you play trills as a result because you know why you're doing why you're doing it the way Bach says. And you know that that is a magnified version of what one sees and that you won't recognize. You can look at my videos, you can look at the Nachschlag on that, you know, in, in the Moonlight Sonata third movement that I uploaded. And, and you know, the, the trill at the fermata, you know, there's that chromatic scale that gets faster and faster up to the trill. And then I perform. I, I, I add a Nachschlag to that trill. It's the Nachschlag that shows the rest is there. You don't need to watch out for a clownish gesture to, to know if it's being done right. Hmm. So that was it. That was, they were the paragraphs dealing with the learning of trills and fingering and double trills and thirds. And the next paragraphs will be dealing with the trills in, in, in specific situations. And when, when you see those situations, you're going to think, oh no, I don't know what to do here. With each situation that Bach presents, you're going to think, I don't know what to do here. I don't know what the right answer is. And then you'll find after what Bach tells you and, and you know, that, and, and after me, when I point out to you in what way to pay attention to it, you're going to feel like you're in safe hands and you're not so lost as you might think when you see the situation on its own. And that'll be then, you know, these, like I said earlier, these, these are, these will be more guiding lights that are going to guide you in dark places. And you won't have a shopping list with individual items like bar 10 of this piece do this, bar 15 of the other piece do that. It won't matter how many pieces you encounter. It won't ma matter whether you've heard of them or not, you are going to know what it is you need to do because you will have that guiding light that'll guide you through all the dark places that do not, that are not on your shopping list. You won't have a shopping list. Your list will be infinitely long. So I'll be very happy if you were to <laughs> join me for those videos. Thanks. Bye.